This work of Satipatthana is very excellent work. And Sierraji said at the beginning of the retreat that this is the best method for elevating one's life. And he said repeatedly too that one has to work continuously without taking breaks, without taking time off during one's day from observation. And at nine this morning, he saw a monk walking by without any mindfulness. And the monk also was not restraining his eyes. That means he was looking around. And um, so in that type of practice, if someone practices in this way, um, they can't possibly gain anything from the practice. And when others see it, someone behaving like that too, when they're a yogi, it doesn't look good. And others are likely to think very little of one who behaves like that when they're on retreat. So if we're doing something that is for our own benefit, that can benefit fit our life in such a great way, then won't we do that thing carefully and respectfully? So don't take this lightly. If, if we take this lightly, it's not worth it. So if, if one is going to behave in that type of manner, as Sayadaji saw this morning, then the practice doesn't bring benefit and it's better not to do the practice at all. It would, be, in fact, the best thing would be if one is not going to, if one is going to behave like that, the best thing would be to leave. So now, 18 days are over, more than two weeks of the retreat. And yogis who have been practicing respectfully, for them, their knowledge has gained, gained momentum. Their practice has momentum. And for some yogis, nothing special has happened yet. And for some, it's just like that. There's, um, this is something that needs to be done respectfully with meticulous care. And if one is not able to undertake the practice in that way, then it's best to stop. So this is a place for working precisely this is not a center where the teachers give in to the wishes of the yogis. Sierraji has turned away from his, the intended topic for tonight because he saw how one yogi behaved in a manner that was not appropriate for a yogi. And thus he's talking about this. So there's a word in Pali, apamara, four syllables. And what this means is to always have sati, to uh, not to dwell without sati. And the opposite of this is pamara, which means losing, losing one's sati not having any sati, being careless. This is not, there's no place for, um, there's no arena in which carelessness is good. It's never good to be careless. Um, and so apamara, this, which means not dwelling without sati. That means one always has to establish sati. This is very important. So it means to be, uh, not to be negligent, not to be careless, to be vigilant, d uh, diligent, vigilant. So th this work, uh, in this work of practice, there's no place for missing. Every second we have to try to establish observation. And if at the start we keep on working at it, 
when our sati gains momentum, then it's like driving a car on a really good road with no obstacles. It's very easy and we can go along at good speed without worrying about hitting anything. But for most yogis, they haven't established this yet because negligence, carelessness is too strong. To understand what apamada means, we examine what pamada means. So in the work of being, uh, be making ourselves truly human, with a human heart, human mentality, and better than average human knowledge, in this work it is very important not to let pamata or carelessness, uh, negligence occur. And it has two meanings. Uh, one is neglecting to avoid things that should be avoided. And uh, two sides to it. And the other side is neglecting or forgetting to do things that should be done. So there are things that should be avoided in life. These are things which are that which bring no benefit to oneself. In fact, they harm oneself and they also bring harm to others and our environment. Those are things which should be avoided. And when we neglect or forget to avoid these things, that is negligence, that is pamata. And there are things that we should do, things that are good for ourselves, that help to create peace for ourselves, for the environment. Forgetting to do these things is also pamata or negligence. So it has these two parts, Neglect, neglecting or being careless regarding avoiding doing what shouldn't be done and neglecting to do, forgetting to do the things which should be done. Every person relies on food to survive, but not everything is good to eat. Some things we may be allergic to and we shouldn't eat those. And some things are not good for anybody to eat. So we have to avoid what is not good for us as an individual and we should also avoid those things which are not good in general. And of the things that are suitable and good for us to eat, we can't go to extremes with those. We have to eat in moderation. So when we forget to avoid eating foods that don't agree with us or that aren't good at all for us, then we bring up upon ourselves a bad result. And we can't forget also to, to eat good food, eat what is suitable um, in an appropriate way. So if we forget to eat the good healthy food, then we don't get the benefit that it will bring. So each in its own place, we have to uh, neglect, if we neglect avoiding the foods that are bad for us, we get bad results. And if we neglect to eat the things that are good for us, then we don't get the benefit that these things bring. So every human being should understand about these two, type, two types of pamata, uh, regardless of their religion or regardless of whether they have no religion at all. The actions of killing, torture, stealing, assaulting women, adultery, having relations with other people's partners. People who can reflect 
don't count these things among, good, among the good things. All these are physical misdeeds and humans should avoid these. In, with regard to speech, one should say what is true, not what is false. One should speak in a kind and sweet way, not harshly. One should speak so that people become united, not so that they become enemies. One should say what is beneficial and not what is useless. So things like lying, harsh speech, divisive speech, dividing people who are unified, wasting one's time in saying things that is, aren't true. All these things are misde mis, uh, misdeeds regarding speech and these, uh, these should be avoided. The opposite of these things should be undertaken. And regarding the mind, wanting to harm others, wanting to put them down. This is a, these are attitudes that should not be cultivated. One should want to help others. One shouldn't want to take, one shouldn't cultivate this desire to take what belongs to others. With the understanding that actions which are good bring good results, ones which are bad bring bad results, then one chooses that path and makes one's life straight. Not otherwise. Sometimes people think, oh, we die, that's it. Nothing matters, it doesn't matter what we do. This is a mistaken idea. So all these, these are mental types of misdeeds. All the above are uh, deeds that we should avoid. And in Pali, these are called ducharitas, uh, things that are not good to do. No uh, wise person will think these types of behaviors good. So avoiding these, the opposite of these, is sucharita, things that are well done. And every human has a responsibility not to neglect not to forget to avoid the bad deeds, speech, mental activity, and to undertake, not to forget to undertake, not to neglect undertaking the things which are good. Just like we should take care with the food we eat every day, taking care to avoid the things that are bad for us, taking care to make sure that we eat enough of the things that we need. Every person should have this knowledge regarding their action, speech, and mentality. As Sayadawji said just now, understanding the things which should be avoided, one should then do that practically, avoid these things in practice and understanding what things are good to do, then one should work to bring those about. So this negligence is neglecting to avoid what should be avoided. That is one form of pamara. If we, if we neglect or forget, if we're careless about avoiding the things which a true human being should avoid, then that constitutes pamada. What should we do? We should avoid killing. We should avoid stealing, avoid adultery. How do we avoid these? We use our sati. We avoid these with sati. So when one neglects to take care in this way, that too is pamada. So if one has the habit of avoiding every second of the time, 
this is this is how one should behave one should have the one should develop the habit of avoiding misdeeds and always in practice always be avoiding them there are three classes of misdeeds physical misdeeds verbal and mental uh, mi- these three kinds of misdeeds or ducharitas and if one lets one's mind go freely then one is likely to indulge in any one of these um, any second every second of the time one is likely to be transgressing in some way and when one commits a transgression then one harms oneself and one is failing in one's human responsibility so one who is negligent is one who's who neglects to avoid physical misdeeds who neglects to avoid speech that shouldn't be said and and lets one's mind go to indulge in these things on a mental level the opposite of this so that is pamara the opposite of this is to restrain oneself to refrain so that one doesn't commit these misdeeds in any uh, whether it's physical verbal or mental and this refraining from uh, taking care to refrain from misdeeds is apamara so when one um one can avoid committing misdeeds physical and verbal then one is clear as far as those go but the things around us are always captivating us for example if someone likes beauty sorry let me start again the when we are control ourselves regarding these misdeeds then we are on a physical verbal and mental level we are free of the misdeeds but there's still the potential whenever we encounter something we like for us to be captured captivated by that and for example if someone likes beautiful sights then when when such a person sees something beautiful it tends to captivate them uh, for someone who likes sounds pleasant sounds beautiful sounds tend to captivate them for someone who likes smells or fragrances those things captivate one tastes for people who like tasty things uh, those things captivate us and then sense of touch various types of touch can captivate one who enjoys touch especially t- uh, touch between the sexes so all these things which our mind likes uh, capture us they captivate us so that we can't get free of them and when people just let their minds go regarding these five sense objects the mind becomes dirty the mind becomes unclean so letting one's mind freely enjoy the five types of sense objects is also pamara so if we control ourselves physically and verbally so that we're um, at least we are um, content with our own spouse or with our own with things that are legally ours and not touching what doesn't belong to us that is good but it's still not good to let one's mind go and indulge freely regarding one's own legal uh, the things that one can legally enjoy so it's it's good to spend time trying to develop uh, mental restraint 
so that one can be truly human. Letting one's mind go freely regarding desirable sense objects. Then as one comes and goes and eats and drinks, when one indulges one's mind like that, this is called pamata, this is negligence. So in life, if one is content with one's own partner, then this is good. But when we are on retreat, it's best not to let one's mind go to thoughts of one's partner at all. In meditation practice, what we are trying to do is to create the wholesome mind, the mind that is completely free of the defilements of greed, hatred, and delusion, loba, dosa, and moha. Kusala, or, or wholesomeness, is described as anavaja. It's free of fault. What is free of fault is blameless and it brings benefit. It brings, uh, it, it brings good, good, pleasant results. So, just like one has to avoid bad food, one also has to um, take in the good food. So, in this work that we are doing, we are trying to create this clean mind, this highest level type of mind, to create it, to develop it, make it stronger, and make it more and more frequent. So this is the work that we do, and therefore one should work continuously at it. But when one changes one's posture quickly, when one goes from sitting to standing up quickly, when from go, goes from standing to sitting down quickly, when one goes from one of the major postures into any of the other ones, when one makes small changes like bending, stretching one's limbs, when one does this quickly, one can't possibly apply one's mindfulness. When one looks here and there, one's attention is broken. So instead of being able to observe in all those moments, one is losing this wholesome mind. One is losing the kusala mind. So one has to develop energy and not just one moment of energy. Because although the clean mind arises, if there's only a few occurrences of it, it won't be strong. So one has to develop its strength. And this is by, um, by making the wholesome mind occur one after another in a connected way. Just like a rope, is made strong by winding many strands of fiber together. When they're wound together and one takes, makes a rope that is four ply or five ply, then this rope can become strong. And because of the uh, combining in a very compact way, all the strands uh, individual strands of fiber, then the rope is quite strong. So for us in practice, we also have to, every second of the time, collect our mental energy. And in one instance of wholesome, a wholesome mind, in one instance where we're developing our mental energies, it's, one is not very strong. But when one follows another, their strength is in, increased. And so when mind moments, these wholesome, uh, wholesome mind moments, one after another, 
follow each other without a gap, they, they develop amazing strength. And this is how the yogis have to work, uh, without a gap. And this is called satajakirya. So one has to work respectfully, not, not moving quickly, not changing posture quickly. This is sakajakirya. So however, whatever position our body is in, we must have sati. So when Sayadawji sees the yogis go to the dining hall, he sees some people looking down and some people look to the side. And um, so this is, in those moments, one's, one's mindfulness is not sunken into the body. One has to, uh, was, one, one should never let the mind become separated from one's body. One has to always have one's attention focused. So, yogis need to work respect, respectfully and meticulously. And they also need to uh, work without taking a break. So, if instead of these qualities, instead of respect, there is disrespect, Instead of meticulousness, there's carelessness. Instead of being continuous, one is stopping and starting all the time. Then one won't develop any energy. And when the energy, when there's just a few moments of wholesomeness, then these can be broken because they're very weak. So what one has to do is one has to work respectfully, meticulously and without a break, to develop wholesome dhammas, to create them, enlarge them, and make them more and more frequent. And if one works in this way, in one week, one will see a very obvious difference in one's practice. One will start to see special things. In two weeks, Def, this is definitely a lot enough time. Some people can uh, see, see dramatic differences in their practice in one week. For some people, it takes two weeks. But for three, three weeks, in three weeks, this should be plenty of time for people to see um, quite remarkable mental strength develop in their practice. So if one does not have anything to be happy about in one's practice after three weeks, that means that the yogi is not working respectfully, not working meticulously, not working without taking breaks. So to remind the yogis, this is a task, the task of making the mind clean and pure. It's very valuable work. So please take care in performing this task. So yogis, yogis who want their life to be high level, from the moment they wake up until the very moment they fall asleep, they should observe standing while, while standing, Walking, sit, uh, lying down, sitting, whether bending, stretching, lifting, moving, placing, blinking, opening and closing the eyes. Every arising object that appears, one should be observing with the idea that one will not miss. One should, one should have this in mind. One should work uh, diligently so as not to miss anything. And if one doesn't work like this, then this is pamada, this is negligence. And one misses the object, and then unwholesomeness, akusala, comes in. So if one is not careless, but one applies oneself to trying to observe every single arising object as long as one is awake, then this is apamara, this is diligence. 
and this is not letting the mind go. So the Buddha distinguished between these two things, negligence and diligence, pamata and apamata. And it is not impossible to dwell like this with sati. The Buddha didn't teach anything that was impossible. When one tries again and again to apply one's ob observing power to the arising object, one sati increases, one can become better and better at doing it. And uh, one, one's ability to not miss the object becomes better and better. And even one finds that sometimes one tries to let one's mind go, but one can't because the mind comes right back to the body and to the main object. So Pandita Rama loves yogis who respect, uh, who practice respectfully and wants to help such yogis. Yogis who don't practice respectfully, Pandita Rama does not love them. Although uh, Pandita Rama doesn't hate them, of course, but feel sorry for them. So Sayarauji uh, has spoken today about these two uh, things that the Buddha taught, apamara and pamara, or um, not, not dwelling without sati and dwelling uh, in negligence so that yogis can can accept and res expect, accept respectfully and apply this practice according to what the Buddha taught, uh, this method for becoming a true human being, for developing a human heart and mind, for developing better than average human knowledge. So this has been, uh, this is why Sayadoji has has talked about this today, and he urges everybody to understand clearly about what it means to be dwelling with sati, to have apamara, and what is pamara, and to practice diligently.